Okay, we're doing another fall inspired piece and I have a 13 inch silicone mold. Put some glass bits around the edge just very slightly and I'm going to mix 22 ounces and one ounce will go into my coaster silicone mold and the rest will go into the the piece and that will be that will be our main layer and then we'll have a background layer that will go on top. I'm using medium viscosity by Counterculture. Green and yellow label. Again, let's see, I'm going to do 11 of the B. I actually did 12, so I'm going to do 12 of the A. A always goes into B. It's thicker and it just mixes much easier if you do it that way. I'm going to start my timer for six minutes and I just want to show you um, my very much used stick here. I go back and forth and around. It will start out cloudy but it will clear up. You don't have to go for speed. Just consistency. So I will fast forward through this part and be back in six minutes. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my stopwatch on my phone and hit start. And we're going to start the timer from now on going forward. I like to keep an eye on my time. I am going to be doing hopefully like a 3D effect and we want to keep an eye on your time. So I'm going to pour, this is a three ounce cup, I'm going to put, um, I would say about an ounce and a half into the cup. And this is a 13 inch silicone mold. It holds at least 32 ounces of resin. And I'm just checking, I see a hair. And I've got a little coaster over here. I'm going to also go about halfway full with just a little bit of space for a background. And then the rest I'll pour in here. So I'm just kind of pouring from the middle out so that I don't um, kind of move my glass beads, glass bits. They're not beads, they're glass bits. And I got them on uh, Amazon just in a craft pack, uh, multicolored metallic glass bits. I'll try to post a link. And we'll probably clean this picture out so that I can come back in about four five hours and do the top coat which will become the bottom side. So I'm going to just put that aside. I like to wipe my stick off. It's got dried resin and glitter and everything on it and it just cures and I just use it over and over again. Using heat but don't use it around the edges. Be careful with that. If I need to shift any glass bits, I can do that. And we'll add some in the middle right at the very end. So the coaster, I'm not going to put glass bits around the edge. So I'm going to kind of figure out the center point of this mold. So I just put like seven drops of alcohol ink in. This is Bray Reese, and then I, that was mustard. I'm trying to do a fall theme. Do two drops of the brown, three since I kind of got them off center. Everything is always going to go inwards. It always looks different in a colored mold versus a clear mold too. So I'm putting the inks in and I want them to sit for a minute. Put one drop of brown in the middle of the coaster. Let it just kind of do its thing for a minute.
and then I want grain to kind of represent this is olive so I'm kind of doing a triangle and I'm trying to do odd numbers this will also push in on the yellow as well and then maybe smaller come right around here and just kind of redo the mustard color just to kind of give it more kind of push that grain back out a bit hopefully so I think that's pretty good in my one and a half to almost two ounces I'm going to take the pouring your heart out bloom by Julie Cutts I'm going to twist, squeeze one, and then just let that second one just kind of drip off. It's good to let the air come back into the bottle and then shut it tight. And then I just make sure to, you know, wipe it off. And then I'm going to use little, this little piggy ball gown. So it kind of looks like a golden pearl color definitely like an interference so I'm just going to put a little a little bit on the end of my stick I'm not going to mix this over the piece I'm going to do it off to the side so the mica doesn't land on top so that was ball gown by this little piggy it's not totally opaque and it has just a hint of shimmer to it. Don't think I don't think you can see, but if you can see the shimmer, I don't know. There's just a little bit of it. I'm just gonna try to disperse this brown a little bit more evenly. And the green like really spread out. I didn't expect that. So anyway, we'll deal with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into. It's been 12 minutes. I'm gonna put it into my five ounce cup that has a piping bag into it you just put it in and fold the edges over and my mold is a, probably halfway full shift it down squeeze get it all down there and then twist really tight I am gonna just kind of swirl this around a bit So this, I'm going to try to bring the yellow tone out a bit in between the green and even the brown a little bit. Just bring it out a bit in the green, but I don't know that there's a whole lot we can do with that. So I'm going to cut off the tip. Let me make sure I don't have any. I don't, I try not to go over alcohol ink right after doing it because you could start a fire. Okay, so I'm going to cut the tip off. Goodness, I need to sharpen these things. I'm going to do this one first. I'm just going to start in the middle and I'm just going to kind of squiggle it. And a uh, couple little jiggies where the yellow part is. And just some ovals or circles where the leaves are. Not any real definite pattern there for sure. Okay. With the balloon paste, um, from my understanding, what I've heard Julie talk about is that you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to wait for your resin to warm up kind of thing. And when it gets lower in your bag, just keep twisting. Make sure to um, keep that plastic balled up in your hand and don't let it drag on your piece. 
Okay, and then these I'm just going to kind of do a little oval. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and go around the outsides of the leaves too. And I'm going to go one more layer if I can make it. Just because I love that lacy see-through effect when you do that on the outside edges of a piece. That is so pretty to me. Okay, on the leaves we're going to push outwards and wipe and just I'm going to drag it in here and there for this one. So here I'm just going to try to um, soften a little bit of the, the blobby looking parts that look blobby to me and just give it a little bit of a more petaled feel, maybe a little bit more organic, I don't know. Right now it's 19 minutes, so I finished that up probably about 17 or 18 minutes as far as the piping goes, just to keep track of my time. And I, you know, I do this in my videos to help me remember. I don't write things down and I have a terrible memory, so my videos are my kind of journaling or diary of how I achieve something. Like how many ounces I used, how much did I add to it, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so these are going to be kind of what looks like leaves, and I'm going to take them straight out to the edge of the mold. I'm not dragging my stick on the bottom of the mold, by the way, just through the pigment and paste. And you know, maybe come in with some of the green in between petals. I don't know. You know, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. Some of it's scooted in anyway. Like here's there. There's no really yellow. But if I put yellow down, it's going to push things out. So I'm just going to try to scoot the uh, ink around a bit. Just dragging it here in, here and there. Now, and then on these sleeves. You could come out so that have points. I want to take them inwards, at least on each side of the point. Kind of taking that white and dragging it through the green a bit. And this may take away from the leafy look, I don't know because my grain really spread so much. So I'm just kind of creating a pattern. Just put more white in there, I don't know. Now I'm going to take some glass bits that I put around the edge originally, get a little bit, drop them into the center. I'm just pressing them down in there. This is doing really pretty on the outskirts. It always does it on the outs outside edges. It's the internal part that I'm confused about that I don't get usually what I want. So that's what I'm hoping for is that it will kind of do the same thing on the petals that I don't know till we unmold it really. I'm hoping that'll promote it doing it, but it also may cause all the white to drop, which is maybe what has happened. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. To clean this, we're going to cover this up so we don't drop anything in it. I have a couple of paper towels and stuff ready, and I just start by wiping the inside and trying to get out anything that's on the edges on the inside of the container.
You can, if you have all night, you can turn this over and just let it cure and it'll pretty much peel out very simply. But since I'm planning on coming back in about four or five hours and doing another layer of resin, this is why I'm cleaning it. So now I'm going to take my alcohol, sp spray really well, and with each time it should get a little bit more slick feeling. And this is a plastic container. I do not use the glass because you can't squeeze the glass and get the resin to move or break away from the cup. With plastic, you can squeeze it, and that helps kind of break the seal of the resin against the plastic. So that's the second time, and that's, that's gotten a lot of it. I'll say squirt down under the spout, especially. It usually takes three times, and then I'm going to squirt really good. 91% alcohol, not rubbing alcohol, and that has cleaned it out pretty well. And I have, there's the marks that come on it that are in red, and then I come in with a Sharpie and put my own marks in between because sometimes my measurements are going to be different from the ones that are actually on the cup. And, you know, every so often it gets wiped off with the alcohol, and I just rewrite it back in. But that's it. We're going to see what happens. And... I don't know if I'll have blobs or not. The blobbing is an issue, and then I would love for the petals to just be more fluid and just to really kind of move in that central part of it. It always works around the outer edges, but the inner part has not worked for me as well. So I'm hoping, but I don't know. It's been only 28 minutes, and if I were using like cast and craft, I would be waiting to about this point to even put the white into the resin. So that would be the difference uh, between Cast and Craft and the Bloom pigment from pouring your heart out. So anyway, we'll see what happens. I'll be back in about four or five hours. Okay, it's been about four hours. It's flexible, but I can touch it. Things have moved can't tell what it's going to look like and you know what I was totally going to use cinnamon as my background for a fall color I never use green though and I decided I'm going to use a dark green and so I have Twinkling Forest by Etsy Funshine Color Shop and this is like an emerald green so that's what I'm going to go for this is really unusual for me because I don't use green. I like a dark color behind so that you can really kind of see the, the features of what you worked on for your effect. Get my timer set up for six minutes. I'm gonna use medium viscosity again. I'm gonna do 22. So 11, I always, go, <laughs> I always go over too much. Okay, 12. And then I'm gonna do 12. Uh, again, I just think it creeps up on you. It's almost 13. So I've got to do 26. I'll be back in six minutes. I'm going to pour just a little bit out of my cup because I'm not sure if it will hold all of... Let me just put three ounces, almost three ounces in there. And we're going to play with the rest. Okay. So, Twinkling Forest, one, two, and a half-ish. Let's see what we come up with here. So, I think I want to put a little bit of olive in just to warm it ever so slightly. So I'm going to put one more because I don't want it really to be transparent at all. That was one more spoon and I'm going to put one little spoon of olive by Counterculture. So 
I've warmed it up just a little bit, but it's still pretty deep. So I'm going to pour some there on the custard. So I don't want to overfill. So I've got I've got resin left over for sure. I've got over four ounces right there. I use the extra resin for some other coasters, so I'll be back in about, well, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, I unmolded the coaster, and it's, it's okay, but I, I'm hoping this will be really light. Wow, I'm just hoping. few spots I had to get some crumbs off the edges. So there it is. I actually think that's pretty. I'm not sure if the um, the cinnamon would have been a better fit but like I said I just never do anything green. I got more of a 3D effect than I typically do. I still have blobs. So I still have to work on those little points of not getting them to be so heavy. But overall, I think it's really, really pretty. So, now I need to do a top coat. I mark my cup on the inside of a three ounce cup, what I think is about two ounces. I don't want any more than that of each part to make up no more than four ounces of fast set resin. Six minutes on my timer. Again, fast set is what I'm using. It sets up in two hours at the most. Okay, now I'm going to just hit stopwatch and hit start and keep an eye on the time just because with fast set you only have 10 minutes of working time and I want to be really cognizant of that. Got my silicone brush and I'm just going to, I just hold it right in front of me and I try not to tilt it. And at first it's a little bit more liquidy. When you get onto the tray, it's going to be much thicker. Um, once you spread it out, it has a th thicker feel to it. You just don't want to be tilting off any of your resin. So this is about four ounces. So, so I used very little on the coaster. And you don't have to use all of it if you don't need it. I would rather use what I need and not too much and then have it go over the edges. I like to get it right to the edge. Facet has an odor and it has more bubbles. The thicker your resin, the more the bubbles. That's why I always use medium viscosity for all my special effects and just because I, I know how to kind of control it. The fast set is only for me for a layer of color and you're not going to do anything special with it or top coating because you can kind of you can kind of control how far it goes on the edges. So I'm just going to now pull it out. So it's thicker in the middle and you can kind of drag it out to the edge, but you kind of, 
you can make it really kind of stop at the edge because of the thickness of the resin. And it's great to have it on a turntable if you can. Make sure it's level um, just because you can turn it and you've got access to good lighting where you're sitting. You can see how far you've taken it to the edges. It's so much easier than trying to leave it just sitting in one place and trying to get all the edges not being able to see, you know, possibly to the other side or whatever it might be. So like right now it's like getting really thick and I'm only at six minutes, but that's how quickly this facet wants to set up. This has more of an earthy toned feel to it as far as the green though, which I do like. So now I've just got to figure out the placement of my knobs. So maybe here and here. For some reason, they like to slide a bit. So what I do is I just wiggle and press. That gets rid of any air between them. And it'll start to stick and be firm. And then you know that you've got a really good bond like the one on the, this left is not moving as much. The one on the right is getting there. Make sure you don't have any resin on your fingers that you're using to push down with. That top coat also just gives more depth to your piece. You don't have to do a top coat, but it doesn't have that glassy finish at the end. Um, it just doesn't. I think the knobs aren't going to move anymore and I'm going to cover this. I'm going to wait a couple hours and then we'll be back.